हेलो एंड वेलकम टू इजी लर्निंग विद डॉक्टर सलमान खान इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी स्टडिंग द पैरासाइट जीआरडीएल एम्फ्लिया दीज आर द सेक्शंस अंडर व्हिच वी विल बी स्टडिंग द पैरासाइट इंट्रोडक्शन एपिडेमियोलॉजी हैबिटेट मॉर्फोलॉजी लाइफ साइकिल मोड्स ऑफ इंफेक्शन पैथोजेनेसिस क्लिनिकल फीचर्स लैबोरेटरी डायग्नोसिस एंड प्रोफिलैक्सिस फर्स्ट द इंट्रोडक्शन पैरासाइटिक प्रोटोजोआ व्हिच पजेस व्हिप लाइक फ्लैजेला एज देयर ऑर्गन्स ऑफ लोकोमोशन आर कॉल्ड एज फ्लैजेलेट्स क्लासिफिकेशन दे बिलोंग टू द फाइलम सार्कोमास्टिगोफोरा The subphylum is Mastigophora and the class is Zoomastigophora. This name is derived from the word mastix which means whip and foros which means bearing. Depending on their habitat they can be considered under human dwelling flagellates, flagellates found in the alimentary tract and urogenital tract. and hemoflagellates these are the flagellates found in blood and tissues most luminal flagellates are non pathogenic commensals two of them cause clinical diseases the first being giardial amblyia which can cause diarrhea and second is trichomonas vaginalis which can produce vaginitis and urethritis next introduction to the parasite it is one of the earliest protozoan parasites to have been recorded giardial amblyia can be defined as the parasite which can cause diarrhea in man next history and distribution the flagellate was first observed by dutch scientist antony van leeuwenhoek in the year 1681 in his own stools it is named giardia after professor giard of paris and lamblia after professor lamel of prague who gave a detailed description of the parasite next epidemiology it is the most common protozoan pathogen and is worldwide in distribution the endemicity of the parasite is very high in areas with low sanitation especially tropics and subtropics visitors to such places frequently develop travelers diarrhea caused by giardiasis through contaminated water next the habitat giardia Amblya leaves attached to the mucosa of duodenum and upper jejunum and is the only protozoan parasite found in the lumen of the human small intestine sometimes it can be seen in the gall bladder and in the biliary drainage next is the morphology it exists in two forms first the trophozoite or vegetative form and second is the cyst or cystic form the trophozoite is in the shape of a tennis racket it is heart shaped or periform shaped when weaved flat it appears as a tennis or a badminton racket and from the front it appears as the shape of a tear drop it is rounded and broad anteriorly and pointed posteriorly it measures 15 micrometers long 9 micrometers wide and 4 micrometers thick all the body organs are paired dorsally it is convex and ventrally it has a concave sucking disc which helps in its attachment to the intestinal mucosa it is bilaterally symmetrical and possesses one pair of nuclei four pairs of flagella blepharoplast from which the flagella arise which is four pairs one pair of exostyles running along the midline two sausage shaped parabasal or median body is lying transversely posterior to the sucking disc the trophozoite is motile with a slow oscillation about its long axis often resembling a falling leaf in this diagram we can see the structure of the trophozoite dorsally it is convex and ventrally it has a concave sucking disc which occupies almost entire half of the body and also helps in its attachment to the intestinal mucosa it is bilaterally symmetrical and possesses one pair of nuclei four pairs of flagella blepharoplast from which the flagella arise and one pair of exostyles running along the midline two sausage shaped parabasal or median bodies lying transversely posterior to the sucking disc are also present the trophozoite is motile with a slow oscillation about its long axis often resembling a falling leaf in the diagram you can see the oscillatory movement of the trophozoite the trophozoite when weaved microscopically appears as in the diagram next is the cyst form it is the infective form of the parasite the cyst is small and oval measuring 12 micrometers by 8 micrometers and is surrounded by a hyaline cyst wall its internal structure includes two pairs of nuclei grouped at one end a young cyst contains one pair of nuclei the exostyle lies diagonally forming a dividing line within the cyst wall remnants of the flagella and the sucking disc may be present in the young cyst this is the morphology of the cyst and the structures it contains when the cyst is viewed under a microscope it appears as in the diagram this is the comparison between the trophozoite form and the cyst form 
Next is the life cycle. The life cycle is divided into four different stages. First, the presence of cysts in contaminated food and water. Second, existation in the duodenum. Third, multiplication by binary longitudinal fission. And fourth is encystation in large intestine. So let's see the steps one by one. First, the cysts in contaminated food and water. Mature cysts are the infective forms. These are introduced into the body by fecooral root. The infective doses around 10 to 100 cysts. The gastric acidity weakens the cyst wall and existation is completed in the duodenum due to pancreatic enzymes. Next, existation in the duodenum. The trophozoite is motile with a slow oscillation about its long axis which is comparable to the motion of a falling leaf. Within half an hour of ingestion, the cyst hatches out into two trophozoites which multiply successively by binary fission and colonize in the duodenum. The trophozoites live in the duodenum and upper part of the jejunum and feed by pinocytosis. It multiplies by means of binary longitudinal fission, producing two daughter trophozoites. The trophozoites attach themselves to the mucosal cells, that is epithelium of the villi, with the help of ventral sucker and feed by pinocytosis. The trophozoites live in the duodenum and upper part of jejunum. And the final stage is existation in the large intestine. When the environment in the duodenum is unfavorable, the trophozoite moves down through the colon and encystment occurs, usually in the large intestine. During encystment, the trophozoite retracts its flagella into the exonemes which remain as curved bristles in the cyst. The cytoplasm is condensed and the cyst wall is secreted. As the cyst matures, the internal structures are doubled up. Cysts are passed through stools and remain viable outside in the soil and water for several weeks. As many as 2 lakh cysts may be present in 1 gram of feces. The trophozoites may be passed in stool along with the cysts, but they die and disintegrate outside and are not infectious. So this is all about life cycle of the parasite. Next is the modes of infection. Source: Man acquires infection by ingestion of cysts in contaminated water and food. The root: Ingestion of as far as 10 cysts is sufficient to cause infection. Vehicle of infection: Vehicle is humans. Children are commonly affected. Direct person-to-person -person transmission may also occur in children, male homosexuals, and mentally ill persons. Enhanced susceptibility to giardiasis is associated with blood group A, a chlorhydria, use of cannabis, chronic pancreatitis, malnutrition, and immune defects such as 19A deficiency and hypogamma globulinemia. Next, pathogenesis. The incubation period is variable but is usually about two weeks. Giardia lamblia inhabits the crypts of the duodenum. It does not penetrate mucosa and invade the tissue but remains tightly attached by means of the sucking disc on the convex surface of epithelial cells of duodenum and jejunum. This results in abnormalities of pillar structure or architecture by cell apoptosis and increased lymphatic infiltration of lamina propria that causes a disturbance of intestinal function leading to malabsorption, particularly of lipids and lipid-soluble vitamins, example vitamin A. It may cause mucus diarrhea in some cases. The disease spontaneously resolves within four weeks in immunocompetent individuals. Giardia lamblia causes symptomatic disease in hypogamma globulinemia particularly IgA deficiency and a chlorhydria. In heavy infection, there is loss of brush border epithelium of intestine, leading to deficiency of enzymes including disaccharides. Hence, there is a general disaccharidase deficiency which leads to lactose intolerance. Variant-specific surface proteins VSSPs, of GRDA play an important role in virulence and infectivity of the parasite. Antigenic variation helps the parasite in evasion of host immune system. If you wish to see more of such videos, do comment below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also, press the bell icon for early notification of my new videos.